this. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to my session. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, a build a consistent Drupal team. I'm uh, from uh, Digital Kina. I'm the development manager over there. Um, a lot of time, uh, Ikina is hard to pronounce, so we try to. That's how you, it's an Australian animal. Uh, look like this. Um, you can see it in the hallway. We have those stuffed animals. It's an end eater. Uh, the reason we put uh, Ikina is that our it's from Australia. It's an animal. The owners, uh, <coughs> brother, you know, they together. 15 years ago, they sit together, sketching the basement. So, how to name the company? That's where the company come from. You can get the the little step animal at the hallway. <laughs> and well, from uh, Canada, we are located in London, Ontario. Is um, we have 60 people in the company right now. Um, I joined the company seven years ago. When seven years ago I joined the company, we only have uh, 10 people, including myself. Now we are grown to 60. Uh, when I joined the company, I was um, the author, a senior developer. And after two years, um, we started to hire more and more developer. I started to managing and start to respond to hiring. Uh, I've been doing management for the past five years. Uh, we have most focused on create once and publish everywhere, and the mobile first, and capability, and our, of course, all our technology based on open source. Drupal is 99% of our project built on Drupal. Um, we believe in bringing the talent in, we have infancy, and plus our experience in building projects together. So today, my topic is about find the talent, and how to put the talent together, and how to maintain and build a, a good team. Uh, we love Drupal. We go to different camps in Drupal towns. We sponsor Drupal camps. Uh, also, we have a lot of uh, grandmasters uh, from ARCAS certification. We do a lot of uh, trainings. We have a, you know, because we're located in Canada and Ontario, it's really hard to find Drupal developers. So we start training programs, train our own Drupal developers, find people out of college. And in summary, today I'm going to talk about identifying and understanding what Drupal team looks like, what the roles, what skills that you need, uh, what your team rec recruitment. And the, the last, I'm going to focus on the most, the, the third part is about once you have a team, how you maintain it, how you make it perform. So Drupal team, project team roles, and skill set. Um, before I start, it's how many people in here are a team lead or owner manager? Um, okay. Uh, how many people are developers or designers and uh, strategists? Okay. Um, you're probably familiar with uh, a lot of the roles I'm talking about here. Um, I like Smurfs. <laughs> I use Smurf everywhere. Uh, there's a story before uh, about the Smurfs. Smurfs is uh, from Belgium. Um, Drupal also found from Belgium, and they both get popular in North American. So I find that not just only they are blue, they also are the authors from the Belgium as well. Also, I think Smurf would identify a different skill set. Each Smurf have very unique, and they put together is a big group. So the, for the smaller project team, when we are in back in the days, um, uh, around seven years ago, we had ten people. We usually have a smaller team. When our projects will only have a, one technical lead, a project manager, a junior developer, and a seamer and visual designer, and the QA person. So when you have a small project, those are five roles you need to deliver the projects. Uh, in Kina, the seamer and the visual design are the same person. We believe all our designer can code. They're not necessarily can code PHP, you know, module development, uh, plugins, but they can do CSS, you know, more of this focus on the theme layer. They design the browser because we believe in mobile first. So we, we use Sketch to do some concept, but we, we try to bring that the coding into the design and, and the code integrated. So when you have a bigger project, one time we do a lot of high education and the governments and healthcare internets. Uh, when you have a bigger account, there's a bigger team. 
there's a technical team, there's a client service team, and then we deliver the project together. There's a technical architect, a technical lead, senior developer, developer, and junior developer, and senior and lab designer, and so QA person. On the client service side, we have engage manager, and also account manager, project manager, and uh, project coordinator. You see even the small team or big team, we all, always have a junior developer. The reason is, it's always good to have one or two junior developers on the team. They not only get mentored by the senior developer, also they have been out the site building task and the low level like uh, module development task. And uh, the, again, in the here, we have a similar web designer. It could be several people because uh, sometimes you have the UI expert come in a lot of time is uh, uh, our uh, designer also can cope. And the QA specialist in a smaller team sometimes a shared role. When we're small, um, everybody you know plays the QA role. Even for the large project, everybody still QA their own work and we do code reviews. But have a QA specialist is good, especially with automated testing when you have somebody expert on your team so they can teach others to how to test. So those are the roles. Uh, in the big team and small team for the projects. And this is a, this slide is from actually Akia many years ago. They have an ebook about the skill set when Drupal developer needs. Uh, so this is the development skill set, not specific to Drupal. You know, when you're looking for developer, what you're looking. There is a PHP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the gate working control, and the MySQL, and even structure. Based on the roles, the requirements for each role is a little bit different. For project managers, you're like, you know, don't let me know PHP. We have technical project manager may know a little bit more uh, coding, but for general project manager, we don't require them to know a lot of code. So, but they have a little bit HTML, CSS, because sometimes they're helping, you know, content edit it and uh, the QA. So they, from technical point of view, they only very beginner of when come down HTML. For visual designers, the PHP and HTML and all those are like, HTML and CSS, they need, they are like experts, but they are very beginner for PHP, or beginner for uh, version control and the SQL server, but uh, more like the intermediate JavaScript person. Uh, we have junior developers who are like intermediate PHP, like uh, uh, and in very advanced HTML, and very intermediate CSS and JavaScript. And there's the developers, just a little bit more uh, experience and come down to teach HTML. And there's a <coughs> developer backend, more focus on module development. Of course, you need more experience on PHP and SQL Server. And this, the technical lead and solution architect, you really need to know a little bit each. They, the infrastructure, they understand the servers and how to communicate to the client, uh, how to solve the client solutions and put um, also, the communication for solution architects is very important because sometimes this we take to another two clients before the project get even to sign the contract because they will listen to the business need and convert to Drupal uh, simple requirement and able to explain back to the client uh, in a simple way. Sometimes you're not necessarily talking about Drupal terms because it depends on the client. Some clients come to you because they know Drupal already. Some clients. They just want a CMS system. They don't know Drupal, so you need to explain it to them and focus on selling them the ideas and how to make their business need into Drupal. Fit. So we have a technical lead and solution architect. Sometimes the, that role is like um, uh, depends on the people, maybe shared. Uh, there's one person could have two roles. A majority we try to separate them in recent years. When we, as we're growing bigger, we start to but specialize more specific roles. In a, when a smaller company, everybody wear different hats. Uh, I remember 10 years ago, I was doing front end, mid end, and the back end. Um, once we start hiring more specific, I only focus on back end. Once, um, you know, when we have more people in back end can lead, I start to more focus on training and onboarding people and hiring. Um, for past three years, I haven't called much. I know uh, I'll, I keep trying with Drupal, the module down, but I don't code myself anymore. So that's why when I come to camps, I can't really talk technical expertise. <laughs> I try to talk more management topic. 
Uh, so the Drupal facilities gives there's a front end, uh, there's a Drupal community involvement, content, modeling, and set building, uh, themings, events, planning, and of course the custom model development and performance security. So each row, um, the points with four mini experts, so they go higher. For the Drupal community involvement, usually once it start to increase when you get to the uh, solution architect level. For example, Scott Reis, another of our uh, Drupal, car, Drupal 8 communities, he did a lot of work on the tweak layer, and he went to different springs, and he did a lot of uh, contribute back to the community. He's our social archetype, he, and he keeps into the code. So, And also the content modeling for the project managers, they're able to talk about what is content type, what is technology, they can talk to clients, and they can help planning. Um, they are not really technical, but they at least know a little bit. For seeming, uh, for the visual designers, they're like uh, intermediate, uh, to the junior level intermediate. Once you get to the technical lead and uh, uh, solution architect, they're like you know, a little bit more advanced. But not required, they know that much seeming because a lot of our solution architects are more towards to uh, backend and infrastructures and performance security. So for the large site, the performance security is very important, um, and infrastructure setup is important, so that's why the solution type, RD type require a little bit more knowledge on that. It's more broad scale, that's why we have, uh, uh, right now we have six grandmasters uh, in our house. Those are the our solution RD type and technical leads, because they understand from the front end to the back end, they understand the whole spectrum, and they can talk to clients about their solutions. So those are the skill set. So once you have those, uh, you know, for the people management, all about, you know, you define the seed, finding the right people, and put the right people on the right seed. So how big the team is? It is uh, how many people are in your team? I believe um, large, even large project team should be less than 10 people. When you have too many people, that doesn't mean going to deliver more. Um, plus, like projects, you maybe in a company have 60 people, uh, 200 people, but when, when you're dealing with one particular project, that's around like 10 people, that's good. Uh, even when you have a smaller team, there are two people, you know, four people, six people can deliver the project. You need a team coach. Um, I started another theory I have, uh, I believe the even number of developers in your team, it's a uh, it's not the really proven, but the proven in the past is um, by my own experience. When I have a two developers, they can collaborate. <laughs> and so I don't sing out the one number. Um, based on all the TV shows, you can see, when you put a group of people together, when you have an even number, they al always work out well. <laughs> that's just my own theory. Um, that a lot of people thinking, if I put more people you know, in, I can deliver this project faster. The truth is not. So I use uh, like, uh, uh, in the web, there's a story about a project of baby would be delivered. So the client's the one doesn't know why he wants a baby. <laughs> project manager is the person who thinks, oh, the woman, you know, nine woman, I can deliver a baby in one month. And designer is thinking, I can design the three baby, the three arms and the one leg baby, and ask, can, can this be done? But because we have the front end also doing design, so they don't add that type of question anymore. <laughs> And we have a developer who thinks the baby either take four to 18 months to deliver, depends on requirements, depends how much change requests client going to come. <laughs> and uh, the tester is the person always say to his wife, this is not the right baby. <laughs> so that's just a joke, a story to talk about. How many do you need a team? You, you need uh, red size, you don't need a lot of people. It's just because you put more resources, doesn't mean you put more people on it and more you know, money and the, the, the project will be faster. So why do we find those people? So you want, so you know what you want, and so how are we going to get the right people onto your company? The step one is review your current needs. Each company is different. Uh, you know that it depends on your size and what stage your clientele, your needs are different. For example, one back the days when we had only 10 people in the company, we're looking for people more 
a little bit more experience, like intermediate to senior people, because they can wear different hats. Uh, they can jump in, jump out. Um, we don't have to worry about too much. We can deliver a lot of uh, projects still. And when we go to our like mid as like 60 people right now, we start to hire way more entry developers because we have the capacity to train people now. Uh, we don't really need everybody to wear different hats anymore. We can, like people like me, step back, not code as much as I used to. Um, I start to code less and start to more focus on management. So we can afford to have different people focus on different roles. So first you need to know your own company, what you need, and then before defining your job description. And why do you need your job descriptions? Don't if you, especially if your local place don't have a lot of Drupal developers, um, you probably don't want to post hiring Drupal developers because that way, for example, you know, in our case, uh, in London, Ontario, there is, oh, you know, we, we have a meetups that we know pretty much all the people come in. We already, we have the majority of the job is working in our company already. So usually when we do a job posting, we're looking for a teacher developer, a front-end developer, that way we get more people come in, and the Drupal, if they already know this, uh, the coding part, you can train them on Drupal. So it's uh, so you can widen your job description a bit more, find more talent, uh, you can sell them um, on Drupal. A lot of people come to me, they don't know Drupal before, uh, talk about open source, I try to say, you know, do you want to take a look, and then we'll train you, and we have all those programs, we'll send you to camps, and we'll send you to conferences. And then you get them, you know, on boarding with Drupal. You, you, I know Drupal fresh blood too. So. Uh, where to post your jobs? If you're just looking for a remote senior developers in Drupal or internet developers, you can post um, the uh, Drupal newsletter drops. I'm not sure everybody subscribed to that. And that's a really good place. And there's Drupal.org, there's uh, job posting. Uh, those are more like Drupal Pacific. But if you want to widen your developer net, you want to post on your local job posting boards. I per personally, a lot of times, just post on LinkedIn uh, because that way you find a lot of people actually in your area and the skills that actually match and they will promote to them into their job search. And also we post our stuff on the uh, our blogs. That way all year long when people, when we come to conference and the people talk to us, they say, oh, you do have a job opening. And I always say there's always a job opening if you are the right fit. Uh, so the next step is evaluate applications. Uh, a lot of times in our case, we start using electronic. We start ask people for LinkedIn profiles. Um, of course, the traditional resume is still pretty good, but you know we're always asking what your LinkedIn profile is. What you if they are if you hire a senior job developer, we're asking what your Drupal profile look, you know, look like. We can take a look. What's your GitHub account? Or so we ask a lot of those online things, and we can take a look. If it's a student just out of school, of course they don't have a lot of experience. Uh, we'll ask them to send us some code uh, examples when they did in school. In they can put them again. Uh, so that's the step. So when you're hiring, what is important? What are you looking for? Um, in Kina, we're looking for personalities, um, you know, the attitude trait first. Honesty, like uh, team player, passion, self-motivated, communication, code qualities, and skills that work experience. We heard about work experience the last. You had the right person, then the work experience will gain from afterwards. Uh, Hardworking, in a way, is uh, environment. If you, start, if you have a people who can do the same amount of work, have the same amount of result in a short period of time, uh, there are some people maybe don't have a goal and just keep working long hours. Uh, personally, I would prefer the people who can be more efficient, can come, you know, can finish stuff on time. We, in Kenya, we work like only 35 hours. I know in states, there's a bit more hours. Uh, we believe in, you know, focus on your nine to five and get work done and then have a rest and you know, go to community, do some cold springs, and so that way your work life is balanced. Um, <coughs> this is the from D. Hawk hiring and promote first based on the integrity and motivation, and third the capacity and fourth understanding and fifth the, the knowledge and the least least based on experience. Experience is something it's good to have. 
um, especially when you hire senior developers or intermediate developers or designers. But not everybody, you know, out of school immediately have experience. You got to give the um, people just out of college a chance, especially in Drupal community. We always say we don't hire enough Drupal people. It's like there's tons of computer science graduates, there's tons of people graduate from college. We need to take them in and when they don't have experience what we're looking for, we're looking for their you know attitude. So while you do interview, I believe I use system one, system two. This is the Siri I use myself is a lot of time we based on what gut is. When you saw this person, you based how they dress, how they talk to you, you get your emotion thinking. That's system one. Your, your gut feeling is a something you tell like in the first five seconds you're thinking this may be not a red fit. But early years when I do interview, I use that a lot. But after a couple of years, I find out I need to analyze that a little bit, not only based on how it feels, because a lot of the developers that live introvert, um, over years I, met, I interviewed so many people who are a little bit shy, a little bit nervous, if you only based on your first impression, you may miss some talent. We have a few developers right now, uh, very good tech lead, they're just not good, they're not all going. But once you talk to them about code or something they're good at it, they start to really, really engage and they start to show the passion. So don't only believe your gut feeling on the first second. Uh, select the, you know, the arrow on the on this side. Everybody know this. It it look like uh, the middle one always longer, but the truth is that they're exactly the same length. Because when you come down to the upper, it's not the same. When you interview the upper and designer, that's a bit different. Interview just normal uh, HR. I think because um, uh, we are more looking for people talented. Also. You can work with them, find their strengths. Um, the gut feeling is good, but just use a little bit of other methods. And talk to them a little more, give them a little bit more chance. Uh, another way we like to do, if it's a local developer, we bring them to, we invite them to the local meetup. So they start talking, not just myself, they start talking to other developers. We get them to speak up and in front of the code and see how they're doing there. Of course, if, if you hire a PM, you want them to learn more open communication, you know, uh, if you hire a salesperson, of course you want them <laughs> a little bit not, not too nervous about your first interview. Um, all my questions during the interview, you're is very laid back and talk about what your passion is, what you want to do in the future. I try to not asking a lot of the traditional HR questions. You know, if you put this setting, how you're going to team, you, you know, you hit a conflict, how you solve that. In the early years, I tried to, you know, read HR books because I was learning on the job. So I read all the HR questions and thinking, okay, I'm going to ask those questions. That make people like make the other even more nervous, more tense. And those questions not helping you find the real talent. So try to make your questions very custom to your own culture, because uh, our company have our own core value. We try to look in those five core values, see if we can find the person. So once you have your, your, you know what you want, you find the person. And this step is the most important. Put the right people on the right seat. Um, this is the whole, doesn't mean you have a talent person and you, you know, the, the team will be great. <laughs> so as a manager, I think over years, uh, in the beginning we call resource planning, um, but after five years I find, you know, based on experience, that people are not resources. You can't, like, assemble a block just because, okay, this front end, I just need another front end, this front end busy, I just replace it with another person. It's not as simple as that. Uh, once you have, each personality is a bit different. Um, even their skills are similar, but when you know, you get to know them and they have their own uniqueness. Uh, some of our front end are more passionate about JavaScript. And they, when you put them on you know, a very complex JavaScript and they get so like, passion and they start to, they're so efficient and then, you know, you think, oh, they're friend so how about CSS? You know, they're not designers, so they're in the head. They feel that that is very boring to them. You know, it's, if I just think in that resource, I just put another designer replacing this, you know, front end person and the jobs person, it may not fit. So, know your people is good. Uh, in individual environment, I believe but we, our company is not vertical. Uh, it's pretty flat, even though we have different roles. We empower each person, take responsibility for their own performance. Uh, so I have 
and every member on the project who had the ownership of the project, they are 100% responsible for what they are doing themselves. And that way, each person got engaged, empowered, and let them do. Even the entry developers, they have a good ideas. You should trust them, let them do their job. Uh, company team members, <coughs> putting strengths to the work. So as if you know their strengths and try to walk the weakness. The traditional uh, HR like um, review is, here's your weakness last year, let's improve them. Um, typically, I heard uh, 10 years ago why join the companies because I'm from China, immigrated to Canada 16 years ago. English is not my first language, so on my first job, the they, you know, the review gonna be like, oh, okay, you know, your weakness is your communications. Your English is not perfect. Let's improve that. And but year after year, I do improve you know, because I start talking more. I start to go to a presentation. I start talking to clients. But that's that person's weakness is coming from their background. You improving on that, you, you know, you can tell them they will do that. But it's not really the right focus. You should focus on their strengths. One of them is their passion about doing uh, community work, and then you let them do them. Like try to avoiding the weakness. Uh, to knowing your teams, you know, the strengths and weakness is really great. So that way, on my review, I'll be thinking, okay, you're really good at this. How we can make that better next year? Uh, get clear and how we gonna make the most strengths each team members. There are some tools. Um, called the data, uh, Dedicated Evaluate Tools we use at Akina. Uh, we're using ELS uh, management system. Uh, so this is the tool. So we, this is probably you need to wait a little. Um, if you're the person just out of school, they're not sure what they like to do, what they love to do, what they're good at yet, you may want to wait a little bit of time. But once they're in the year or two, they should know what they love to do, what they're good at it. So we do evaluation. First we do self-evaluation. Uh, I sometimes do this myself this too, is each year because you're growing, you change your love and your leg and what you're good at it. So there's a four bucket, love doing and great at doing at it, like doing and good at it, and don't like doing and good at doing, and don't like doing it and not good at doing. So what do you want to focus? Of course, focus on the top two. And don't worry because you need to build a trust system. Like a lot of people are afraid of thinking, oh, I don't like doing that meaning like I'm not trying to be a team player. I choose not because in our team, there's always people love doing it and great at doing it. And, and when the ones they don't like doing, not good at it, there's someone else actually is opposite. They love doing that and good at it. Using example, we'll have a developer love at debugging and she loves debugging and finding them, you know, evaluate other people's code. Um, she's when the lead on our support team. A lot of other developers, I don't like debugging, I don't want to support someone else's code, but to her, is she's great at it, she loves doing that, we promote her to that spot, and she's passionate. And then the other team member, is their weakness, so we put them into together to put a good team. So find the team coming to each other, that's why you can put team a great together. So once you have the team, there's only, there's always people issues. The people say the most important access to a digital company is the people. So there's four issues. Um, right person, right seat. Right person, the wrong seat. Wrong person, right seat. Wrong person, wrong seat. The first one sounds like, how come that's an issue? That the right person and the right seat, it shouldn't be an issue, right? Because a lot of time, those are the person you are, don't spend much time with. Because if they are the right person, that right seat, they're driving the company, they're driving the projects. You don't see them have any problems, so you leave them alone, you just, you, you don't spend enough time. So that's the person you want to pay a little attention, just because that wrong, right person, right seat, you want to make sure they keep, you know, have the momentum of going with the company. The right person, wrong seat, um, how do you know it's the right person? Because they meet your core values. But the you know, wrong seat, you may want to adjust it and use the evaluation form, find out what they're actually good at it. Uh, wrong person, right seat. The personality is wrong, that is said, the, the doesn't have the right issue. Can you train them? If you can't train them, they may have to move on. Wrong person, wrong seat, that's the time you probably can start thinking, is that need to 
if this is going to grow with the company, or can help them to move on to a different spot. So how to make sure the right person, right seat, and the, uh, to to perform the best, to set its clear expectations, uh, have your core value and roles and all defined, and communicate expectations, have a coordinated conversation with your direct reports, and make sure ask them what is working, what is not working. Uh, it's not really a performance review, just like quarterly conversations, one on spent outside your company, somewhere a coffee shop. You know, get honest one on one to talk about what they want to see. You, first, you tell them what the company future is going to look like, and get them to think about what their future looks like. And then you have annual review. Uh, a lot of time, is people feel like there's a paperwork, but you do want to highlight your way on, on. So you want to talk about. You know, there's growth, not the salary review and annual review is separate uh, conversations. Uh, difference between the group and team. A team is growing and learning together, and we work together. You put the talent people together. You need them working towards to one goal. That's on the life side, just a group of people. That's not a team. The team is we work together, get the job done. A fully functioning product team. <coughs> I believe if they trust each other, they engage uh, on future conflict, they will resolve conflict, uh, commit to decisions, plan to action, hold one each other accountable to deliver the plans, and focus on achievement collective results, common skill set, assignment value differences. Everybody has different background, they are uh, very valuable for that. And um, what not working as a team, when you don't have the trust of the as a team. You free the conflict, you don't tell each other how you really think in their face. And you lack the commitment, avoiding accountability, and in not pay attention to the results. Those are the ones to destroy a team. So I put trust as the number one. And how you gain trust? Uh, if you are new to the management or lead, trust is not something you just try to say and then people will trust you. It's something you had to do. You had a commitment and get your people to know know them and know how they feel. And you tell us to tell talent people on the right spot, asking input to sustain. And also very important, apologize if you make a mistake. Nobody is perfect, we sometimes make mistakes, but apologize in front of them and listen to people. So a lot of time it's not about tell people what to do, it's about listening to their ideas. And take care of little things like uh, make a positive difference, you know, send a sex note. When they're doing awesome things, say directly, um, right away. And be honest, um, tell them what you really think, and I think that's, that's how you gain the trust. Uh, there's four stage of the team growing. First you're forming, and storming, and norming, and so forth. So you find the right people, and especially every time you add a new team member to your team, this is going to start all over again. But this is okay. Once you have the right choose, you trust each other, each other, you're okay with conflict, you're from the forming storm, you pass and do performing really quickly. Um, every time the outside change, the outside environment change, that also may make you back to the loop again. This is just constantly going, constantly changing. That's why I want to spend a little time to talk about change management. When you have a team from small to big, uh, there is or a new hire new team member, or you have a new sector of the pro your business went to a different site, there's change to it. And change a lot of time, it does bring resistance, confusion, frustration, anxieties, and those things. A lot of people afraid of change. So what do you, how you preventing those things? You first have a vision clearly, what you know where you're going. You had a skill set of people who can help you to make the change. Also, you gave some incentive and then you put the right people on it. You have a plan and together you'll make the change. There's some myths about the fact of team changing. There's more information will help people to change. No, it's not the more information, it's the right information. Sometimes you share too early about the information in your ideas and make, make people you know, feel anxious, want to know what's next. So share the right kind of information is the, the real. And people don't like change. 
wrong again. People do like change. They just don't like change imposed on them. They like to be a part of that change. Change is an event. It's like a birthday, a wedding, can it just happen and stuff. That's wrong again. It's not an event. It, it's consistent changing. It's consistent. Um, so in order to maintain your team, you need to keep that. It's like, uh, it's from the norming, storming, and the form again. It's going to happen one more time. It's constantly going on this way. That's why you need to build the right attitude and the belief, and you get the behavior working, you see the result, and your team going to believe in you, and you're going to make your team run in a really good. So you're going to build a happy team, and you produce the greater work, and have a big success. I always believe happy people first, then the great work. Now the great work, success, then happy. You need to be happy first, and then to produce the awesome result. So this end of my presentation, those are some references and recommendations of books I read, um, which helped me uh, over years. Uh, here are the slides. The, some of the skills that I, the slide I copied from the after ebook for the build great Drupal team. You see that uh, if you download my presentation on the website, the right the right ones are that you can use any type team. Don't have a Drupal team specific. Only the blue bars are very specific to Drupal. Okay, so I have uh, nine minutes. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you were talking about like performance reviews uh, or attempts to get with them, um, what's your experience? You were saying you suggested quarterly, I guess, to get with your team members to spend time with them to go over different things. Um, does that count on how many people are in the team? Like, if you had less people, would you spend less time or more time? Or more, if you had more people, would you spend less time? Does that change by the number of people that you supervise? No, it doesn't change. Um, the quarterly, quarterly conversations not exactly revealed because you don't document them. It's not like go to their files. And uh, a quarterly conversation is your direct report. So it uh, depends on how many people in your team you are direct report to you. Um, you go to have a conversation. Usually it's a 90 minutes conversation and quarterly. Trust me, you only need done once. And uh, in between, like if they have any questions, they can always come to you. What I told my uh, direct reports is uh, I have a quarterly 90 minutes with you. We talk about our what you think, what you need to improve. Um, if any time in between the quarterly, if you have anything, I'm open. You, that will be their response to request that meeting. So the quarterly conversation, you already, there's three big questions I ask you already is what is working, what is not working, um, here's a company going, what do you see you're going. So those are like more like a touch point, uh, not the like uh, you know something you need to file. Uh, it's, it does not affect their uh, compensations or you know, uh, it's more like just make sure you're on the same page. And you have the, we also reviewed the, we, ha, we call racks, this is the ghost, like what their quarterly goals are. And we we'll set together, it's more like something they want to do themselves and uh, we'll make sure they don't have object goals. So each, each team, you really have one like um, lead and then we maximum try to have each team have their own their reports so we don't have uh, one person doing so many, but myself, I do a lot still because so we still try to build our second leadership right now. Uh, I still spend a lot of time on one-on-ones. Um, ideally, I only need to do the 10, the second leadership, and their second leadership do the more uh, after. So it doesn't matter how big your team is small, you, you, you spend roughly 90 minutes per quarterly. How many people do you uh, do the quarterly sessions with? Uh, myself, I'm doing a little bit more than normal. I have a 20 right now. This is, I want to reduce to 10 because um, I need to build enough. I need to build enough like uh, uh, second leadership to can do the ones. I'm training a few people. There's a few uh, like uh, developers I do like I'll do with another lead, so they know how to do this next time. So I think in, in March I should only have 10 people I need to do, but. This year, in the beginning year, we're still training people on the leadership. They had to know how to do it because a lot of time in a developer company, uh, you, you have a lot of developer you promote to this lead. They never done the 
the leading part or managing part, and they had to learn between the two. So you can't expect them just know what to do. I already have a template, of a list of questions we go through. Um, then I'll show them once in front of them, and then we'll do it together. And next time they'll they'll do it by themselves. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would like to reduce a little bit more. <laughs> Each year I reduce like ten. Like I think in the beginning I had thirty, but that's that's not working. That's why I don't have enough time to do anything else. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you have uh, do you have people that work remote, or are they all in the office? How do, how do uh, we do have remote people remote. Workers? Yeah, the remote we don't have a lot. We start two years ago. We start hiring remote. We only have four remote people right now. It's not a huge amount. We started growing because we got to in order to grow bigger. Um, and especially you want the more experienced people, then remote is another option. It's a little bit challenging. We don't have the, in the first year, we didn't have that all set up. And we don't have that mindset of people working remote. Because when you have small amount of work remote, you have to think of remote first. And all your communication, your conference calls, and all the meetings, you had to think about if you're remote, what it look like. Um, but so far it's pretty working because we have a lot of more like senior remote. We don't have any entry remote worker right now, so that's something I need to tackle in the challenge in, in the new year is how we're going to have entry or intermediate type remote employee. It's a little bit more challenging to have a, people just out of school remote because you need kind of in the team mentoring. So that's something we still try to learn. <laughs> Is your presentation anywhere online? Yes, it's on the the Drupal like the Florida Camps uh, website already. I upload this slide actually before the the session. And so, any other questions? Otherwise, thank you for coming. And there is a, always a, a the library talk. You can talk to me after as well. Thank you.